Hi, thanks for joining us again. I'm Donna McMullen, your host for BRMC Healthy Connection. And joining us today is Chaplain Tom mm -hmm. Baker. We've been talking about what goes on at the hospital, mm -hmm. the volunteers uh, that are there doing a non-denominational pastoral care. We've been talking about hospice and how sometimes you transition right with that patient when it's time uh, and go with the family to hospice, which mm -hmm. is wonderful, even though they have their own chaplain. Right. I love that <laughs> relationship that you mm -hmm. have. And I know that in December, you have some very special occasions right. coming up. Yeah, I think um, one of the things we'd like to do, I know that hospital has done it before, is an annual celebration of life mm -hmm. where we re just remember all our patients who have died in the last year and invite their families to come for a, a memorial service. And we're going to hold that service on uh, Wednesday, December the 8th. Wednesday, December 8th. Right, okay. at, at uh, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. In the, in the Longer Burger dining room. Did right. I say that right? Uh, okay. Lager Borg. Lager Borg. Which we all, Still learning we all say the large dining room. The large dining room. It's the only <laughs> space in the hospital large enough to accompany, right. uh, take care of it's right there where the cafeteria can. is yes. so people can find it. And, okay. and it'll be right there on, Dece on December the 8th at, at 3 o'clock. And it'll just be a service. I think I kind of see it in two ways. Uh, first of all, to recognize, it's important, I think, to people we recognize the loss, because mm -hmm. one did occur, mm -hmm. and to also offer support, especially during folks during the holiday season, because right. holidays can be so difficult for someone who's grieving, especially if they're in their first year of grief. It can be kind of tough, and so to help kind of people to get through that period of time, to remember their loved ones, and to have a celebration of their life, and to remember, I think, the important thing about grief, I think, for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is I know a lot of people say, you know, we have to let go and we have to move on and all those things. Yeah. And I think there's some truth to that. But also, I think we have to establish new relationships with the ones that are, who, we, who we love and who are not here. Right. I mean, I, my parents have been have been dead for a long time. I think about them every day. And my yeah. grandmother, yeah. I, you know, I talked about her. And so I think that's my way of remaining in relationship with those important people in my life, is finding a way to kind of remember them through my life now True. and celebrating their life and the things they taught me and gave to me that I can teach and give to other people. You know, so I think that's their legacy to me, and that's a legacy I want to leave behind. How wonderful, because there really is no closure. Right. I mean, there, there, that's, I know that's been removed yeah. from so much of the teachings right. that, uh, that, right. that there's no closure. Right. That if you loved that person, you've lost that person, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a hurt. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, a different way to right. remember them, um, mm -hmm. celebrate them. Uh, yeah, I, I remember when I went to uh, Rome several years ago in the catacombs in Latin, it's over the catacombs is the old symbol, old saying of their lives have not, cha have not ended but changed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true for right. a lot of, that we celebrate this change of life and that they're still with us in many ways and we celebrate everything they gave us. So that's kind of the, the nature of that memorial service and I'm hoping there'll be a place where people can get together and celebrate and to remember and to give each other support. And, Wonderful um, idea. So, uh, so I think that'll, that'll, that'll be a good thing. This will be on December the 8th to have for people. Will people that attend this, and this is open to the public. Of course, we're, yeah. We're, this is mm -hmm. who we're asking. If you have lost a loved one, mm -hmm. um, please Yeah, please come, come, and come join right. Us. Mm -hmm. um, and will there be an opportunity for someone then to to mention the name of the person they've lost, or is this something that will... I think there will be an opportunity mm -hmm. during the service to very quickly just have people mm -hmm. come and just say, I'm here to remember mm -hmm. so-and-so and, and give a name. I think that's what we can do. But we want to make sure that the time doesn't run over. Sure. And, yeah. and, you know, as it gets darker earlier and earlier, we'll make oh, sure we want to make bet. a... <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually these services, when I've done them, they're like 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah. And we have mm -hmm. some really special musicians coming in to offer some music and we have refreshments. So that'll be good. It's too. a wonderful, wonderful opportunity mm -hmm. for people to um, take that set aside time right. and remember mm -hmm. someone they've lost, right. someone they love. Right. Um, what so else that. is going on over at the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> what else is going on? Well, I know we're also doing that same memorial service for our staff, for mm -hmm. all of, any of our staff who have lost our loved ones. And unfortunately, since I've been there, I've met a lot of staff who've had losses of loved ones very recently. And so I just wanted to make sure that we reach out to our staff too. I think, because as the hospital chaplain, as I'm really the director of spiritual care, director of pastoral care, um, 
we want to make sure that you know our, we're there for our staff as well. Cause Absolutely. Because our staff are right there at the front lines, and they need support. Yes, they do. And they need that time to kind of remember that you know that there's somebody out there watching them and and Cares want about to give them, them yeah. yeah. And I think um, I often tell the staff you know back in the 90s I knew what it was like to have compassion fatigue and mm -hmm. and I certainly remember going down that road and it's easy to get there that's why we are so <laughs> lucky to have you so so so, very so I want to be supportive to our staff and have our pastoral care volunteers make sure the staff are doing well so we're making a special mm -hmm. service for our staff and that's gonna be on the December the 2nd okay. so that'll be the week before and I'll be at the same location so uh, that's some of the other things we're doing and I'm thinking all kinds of things to do for the future. future. Yeah. I know in 2011 that you've got a lot of <laughs> ideas. That, uh, yes, we were talking about yeah. that So, in the ethics committee meeting yesterday about mm -hmm. bringing in some speakers and things like that. But uh, right now I think uh, at the hospital, just having a uh, good time meeting lots of different people and just encourage people if they're in the hospital that are any of our volunteers or myself be glad to see them. Mm -hmm. and just offer them comfort. Let's go ahead and, and um, give those dates and phone number again one more time okay. so that uh, for the community... For the community come, memorial that mm -hmm. anyone can come to and are invited to, it's December the 8th at 3 o'clock. Okay. Almost forgot the time yeah. there. <laughs> December the 8th at I've 3 o'clock. I've got that right over here just to, <laughs> just to be... Just remember because, yeah, yeah, sometimes, yes. That's what my mother said. She believed in the hereafter because she walked into a room and said, what was I hereafter? <laughs> so um, that's what I had, that hereafter moment right then. So yeah, but December the, uh, the uh, 8th at 3 o'clock and everyone in the community is invited to come and we hope to see them there. Well, and the number again for your office? For my office again is 508-7750. Uh, 7750. Right. So please jot that down, take yeah. the number down. And you may not need it right now. No. You may need it in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, you may know of a friend or a neighbor. Mm -hmm. How how better to help them go right. through a loss. Right. Uh, if they've lost someone that's mm -hmm. been in the hospital, please be sure and, mm -hmm. and know that Chaplain Tom Baker is here. So yeah, I'd be glad to help any way I can. When you said the staff, that brings back uh, years ago in uh, San Diego and, and having a staff and mm -hmm. um, in working in assisted living and uh, the staff gets so close when you're in those proximities mm -hmm. assisted living and taking care of primarily all elderly mm -hmm. in this case and um, we always were so attuned to how the family was doing with right. a loss mm -hmm. that we really found out we had to play, pay special attention no, to our staff because they mm -hmm. have um, given their heart and soul mm -hmm. and love to this person right. And it's as much a loss for them as well. So, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And I think all all the staff, everyone, you know, I've been in medical care a long time, and the people are great at, at um, and I say this in the best possible way, they're, they're professionals, and mm -hmm. they give great care. Mm -hmm. And But there's that time when they care for someone who reminds them of someone else or who they just grow closer to because that's, we're human beings. We yeah, can absolutely. get grow closer to someone because of just the way they are, their personality, sure. or just because the way they we kind of, able to click with one another and yep. and it just the way we are put together and I think that happens for a lot of our nurses and a lot of our staff that I they agree. they grow close to a lot of our patients they give excellent care and uh, and after a while if they see someone get sicker or they see someone actually you know not nothing wants nobody wants to have them die but then when that happens it, it affects the staff absolutely too. And I yep. see that a lot well, like I said I go through the ICU every day and I, I talk to a lot of the ICU nurses about that and they see a lot of a lot of things in the ICU that they have to deal with. And yeah. I think it just helps them to have someone to talk to. Yeah, they, they need that person. Yeah. They need someone to talk to. I'm so glad you're doing this because <laughs> this is always, it just warms my heart. I've been right. in healthcare also a lot of years mm -hmm. and it just, uh, we're not dealing with widgets. No. It's not an assembly line. <laughs> right. We are dealing with <laughs> right. people's lives. Right. Right. And as you say, you want to certainly you know, in the client emergency center, you mm -hmm. need to stay professional, calm, but it doesn't mean that it's not playing right. on your emotions. Of course not. Uh, yeah. And that it's mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form causing mm -hmm. you hurt. Right. So right. Um, our role is always to turn hurt into mm -hmm. hope, but right. we need to do that for each other as well. So mm -hmm. once again, I'm just so glad you've oh. come to join <laughs> us. <laughs> glad to be here. It's been, it's um, been great. It helps so much at our hospital. Mm -hmm. It just takes a great hospital and makes it even better. Yeah, and I, and I think the hospital is great about that, that the, um, 
that you know a lot of hospitals to be honest with you are, are looking at you know because we're we're living this time of there's lots of recession going out there sure. and we know it's out and there's a lot of hospitals out there who when they look at budgets the first thing they might kind of might cut out is things like volunteers and yes. pastoral care yes. and social work yeah. and things like that that touch everybody's lives and and so I'm, I think this hospital the one that the run of the reasons I came here this hospital really proved to me that they're very committed to offering quality professional pastoral care to their patients yes. they see it as another aspect of healing yes absolutely yeah, the, the so whole treating the whole person treating the yeah, whole person notice I made exactly. that heart <laughs> yes that's right we <laughs> treat it, the yeah. whole person we and I think that's a really that's a really uh, great thing to do and this hospital does it really wonderfully Thanks, Tom. I couldn't okay. agree with you more. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for joining me oh, great. today. Good to be Thank with you. you all for being here with us. Join us again next week for BRMC Healthy Connections. And thanks again. <laughs> You're Appreciate welcome. it. You're